So just get yourself into a posture that feels stable. And if your body has gathered any tension, allow it to release. And if you can bring some awareness to the lower part of your body, like your legs and your feet, and just kind of feel the weight of them on the ground or in the chair, the stableness and the safety of your own body, the strength of it. And then imagine pulling that strength up through your spine. Feeling a very strong, stable back with a very soft, receptive front with nothing clenched or held in. and pulling that strength all the way up the spine, up through the crown of the head. Strong, but not tight. Strong, but not tight in the back. And then once again, the front, the face totally relaxed. All of the muscles of the face, soothing and smoothing. The brow unfurrowed, the jaw unclenched. Tongue on the upper palate, mouth gently closed. and shift your focus to the breath. And just stay with the breath for a few minutes. And if your mind feels heavy or prone to sleep, focus the breath at the nostrils. But if you feel very busy and speedy, focus the breath at the stomach where it rises and falls. And if you're anxious, bring the focus all the way down to the sensation of your feet and rest it there. So just make a micro adjustment where specifically you're going to focus.
And then revive your motivation to yourself in your own words. The reason why we do this practice is, finish the sentence. and consciously shift to analysis. So first think about historically in my life, what has my relationship been with killing? Or what has my value been to life of all types? Whether insect or animal, views about people, those I know, strangers, outsiders, people in other countries, views about war and peace. Just kind of clarify for yourself, what is your relationship with this concept? Do you feel deeply that killing is wrong? And there's no need to edit or censor yourself. This is just a self-knowing, a check-in. and bring in ways that you really feel quite happy with the way that you've thought of life or valued life. Together with those times that maybe you didn't make the right choice. And there's no need to fall into the emotion of the story, just be kind of objective and check in. When have you done well or done in a way that you feel really satisfied with? And summarize by thinking, going forward, I would like more of this and less of that. And just fill in those blanks to yourself. More of this, less of that. Related to life. 
killing. And then shift to thinking about your relationship with stealing, taking what hasn't been freely offered, just historically, when you viewed others' possessions, have you had some sense of entitlement towards just certain kinds of objects? things that might have seemed a victimless crime or were related to taking from someone who had an overabundance, whatever sort of dances of justification related to your stealing habits, just kind of know them. Perhaps not returning things that you've borrowed or taking for granted the objects that belong to a community or very coarse, obvious stealing like embezzlement, taking actual things of value, just kind of know that. What's your relationship in with stealing? Maybe things that societally are not looked down on that much, but in your heart, you know, are actually stealing. Maybe related to things on the internet or books or music. Sharing in ways that perhaps were not really the best. Just checking in with that. And again, summarize for yourself, going forward, I'd like more of this behavior and less of that behavior related to your relationship with the possessions of others. Just kind of clarify to yourself, going forward, what?
And then now just shifting to looking at your relationship with deceit or habits of lying. Again, with gentleness and very clear honesty, where and when are you most likely to deceive? What have your patterns been? looking at gently at some of the reasons why there might have been deception. Maybe reasons of safety, or maybe reasons of reputation, or wanting to be seen a certain way. Maybe sometimes even with the wish to harm, just really gentle, clear honesty. How and when do I lie? And summarizing in terms of speech, in terms of honesty, what would I like to do more of going forward? And in terms of deception, what do I want to do less of? And finally, shift to looking at your relationship with sexual misconduct. Are there patterns of misuse of this energy, ways in which you might have harmed yourself or others? Or maybe neglected or deceived or harmed the relationships of yourself and others or their bodies? And really observe your own history with a kind gaze, a forgiving gaze, but without justification and excuses either.
and going forward in my romantic relationships and sexual relationships, what should there be more of, what less of, even just in terms of inner mentality? How can I refrain from objectifying others or harming others with this energy, with these behaviors? And think all of the energy you put into these reflections, may it create a momentum developing into your fullest potential for health, for beneficial activity, wisdom and compassion for yourself and others. John to Sanchorim Poshe, my Kepanam Keguchi, Kepan Yampa Mepai, Gon He Gondu Pawasho, Tony Dawarim Poshe, my Kepanam Keguchi, Kepan Yampa Mepai. And you can relax your attention. Okay. So the helpful thing about deeper self-awareness and deeper acknowledgement of our own kind of hiccups in our path is that in theory, it can make us a lot less judgmental of others. You know, when they, when they slip, when they trip, when they're not in alignment with their own ethics, you know, it's not like we're not holding them accountable, but we're not having that kind of like blockage of heart that doesn't understand the humanness of these mistakes. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I keep saying with a very kind gaze, with a very compassionate gaze, with a gaze that understands dependent arising, look at your own you know, mistakes in terms of these things. Because if you over identify with it and think I am bad, then you'll be defensive or depressed <laughs> or both, right? But if you think, everything makes sense given its context and history and family of origin issues and societal pressures and all the things, all the things. And still, that's not how I want to live. That kind of objectiveness frees you up to change while at the same time acknowledges kind of the universal human experience. So we want to, you know, kind of look at our hard stuff very clearly, but don't let it send you into a spiral Okay, so um, we'll have just a little short break and then we'll shift gears into bodhicitta and a um, little short bodhicitta med meditation and then tomorrow bodhicitta as well. So um, if there's any quick questions we can do, one, if it's just burning, otherwise uh, just have a little stretch. Is everybody okay? Yeah, stretch, okay. 15 minutes? Okay. 